Hey guys, so I'm going to talk about investing in MTG and is it smart? Now, number one, it is not for everyone. I highly recommend that if you have employee matching or you have a bit, you have more money to put in stocks and bonds, put in stocks and bonds. If you like real estate and you know what you're doing and you can fix properties up, then put it in that. I would say magic cards or any cards will be a last ditch effort to diversify. So I've been all over the place with Magic the Gathering, but I've kind of figured out what my line is. Sealed product, bad. Modern product, standard products. Any product that's not on the reserve list, bad. And as I'm going to talk about the various what I've learned from, in quote, investing in Magic the Gathering cards, single cards are good because they take less space. Reserve list is good because it cannot be reprinted. When a card is reprinted, generally speaking, they're reprinting it in a better form and the current price of the cards will go down. Okay, so that, that's basically in a nutshell, okay? So what I've learned about alpha cards is for me, I've taken a long time. I've spent weeks and months trying to figure out. I do own some alpha cards. I just don't know how, you know, with a professional cutting machine, you could not trim an alpha or a beta card to make it look alpha. Again, with a professional cutter, not with your scissors or a nail clipper, my understanding is, yes, there are cards that are really obvious because the text is different, the little, the colors and the little bubbles are different, but those are the exceptions. The large majority of cards, you're just looking for the indent, right? You're looking at the indent. Now, if you were to use toe clippers, you would obviously not have enough pressure to cut it correctly, and the indent would obviously look different, but in my opinion, you know, what if you, I mean, especially with the value of these cards, what if you were just to cut, and, and maybe people don't do it because beta cards are worth so much. Now, as I am going to try to prop this up, my neighbor's dog is barking. They've left him out again the entire day. Poor dog, right? I don't even think he's water. He just, uh, the lawn care, our lawn care guy came too, and he's still locked in the back with little, very little grass. But regardless, um, I like beta. I like beta. I think beta makes more sense from the perspective of a investment because um, there's no question and it's less money than alpha. Now, if alpha was less money, then I would be like, okay, that makes sense. But beta, alpha is way more expensive than beta on the large majority of cards. So I don't touch alpha. Beta is fine. Uh, unless it's like an alpha common, something that people don't really care that much about and it's just part of the collection. Unlimited, I can tell you this, unlimited goes really fast. Unlimited, you will have people contacting you out the wazoo to buy these cards. Um, I and, and this is a very interesting thing because I started to, I when I first did this investment thing, I didn't think unlimited was the play. I thought it was revised because you can pick them up. They're much more common, so more people have them, and they're much more utility, right? These dual lands are utility. So again, beta cards are kind of hard to sell. Lightning bolts, easy to move, but like a Northern Paladin, finding a buyer is not super easy. Unlimited dual lands, there will be buyers. Unlimited demonics and so on. People do like unlimited because it does have a better better visual effect, right? If you're gonna spend this much money and you have unlimited amounts of money, unlimited is the way to go, in my opinion. I think these are all unlimited, I believe. Yep, they're all unlimited. Now let's get to, uh, oh, there's a wheel up there. The wheel of fortune, because of EDAs, essentially it's a 10th, it's a 11th dual lands. You got 10 lands and then you got wheel. Wheel is like a non-blue dual land, and that's how I treat it. It's just so powerful in terms of like what it can actually do. Um, Candelera is pretty cool too, but I'm gonna talk about the Moxes. They're very hard to move. Dual lands, especially revised, but even unlimited, are very easy to move because people need them for their EDHs. Therefore, they're not super picky. Now, again, they're picky, of course. They're gonna look at conditions and stuff but they're not as picky as the people buying Power 9. 
buying Power 9, you are going to be sitting here for two hours while they nickel and dime you. It is not a super pleasant experience. I've sold the majority of my Power 9 to my good friend. And even him, you know, we nickel and dime every... Oh, look, have you seen this scrap? Oh, what about this thing? Y yes, yes, I, I get it. You know, it's not near mint. It's an old card. But Power 9 is, and uh, even the Lotus, the, the Mox, I keep one of each for myself. And then I these are my trade bait. This is actually a trade binder, if you believe it or not. And uh, occasionally I take out the trade binder when I want to do a trade, which is soon. Like Soul Ring Unlimited is going to, you're never going to not find a, because of the price point. But a Mox um, is a lot different. Uh, a Mox, because of its value, you're going to get like, it is very frustrating in my personal experience selling, maybe because my customers are not into Power 9, but I'd much rather have an unlimited Soul Ring or an unlimited Demonic Tutor, even though they're less value or even an unlimited Dolan would be much 10 times easier to move than a Black Lotus. So these are a copy artifact, for instance, unlimited. You're, you can't even keep them in stock. Like I don't actually list what I have because uh, I don't really, A, I don't particularly know unless I, this is why I also make these videos because then I can make a video of my trade binder and there's a card I want. I'm trying to get a Liliana of the, no, Liliana, uh, War of the Spark, Japanese foil, and the guy wants to look at a trade binder, and this is the trade binder, so. Oh, Meshark's Workshop, also very good, and there we go, we end here. These are just dual lands, you know, dual lands, wheel, like I said, wheel to me is like a dual land. Uh, it is in that price point, and obviously it is in that demand. Dual lands are investable. They are beautiful cards. They are absolutely, in my opinion, investable in every form. I guess we can look at the underground seas because that's the typical one I care about. Even the volcanic is nice too. Volcanic is pretty nice. Volcanic, trap, and so on. But we'll just take a look at underground sea. It's a beautiful page. Um, these, I mean, they are an investment. There's no other way to say it. The demand for them is incredibly high. The buy list is at almost an all-time high right now. Just a few days ago, they were at 620, which was and then on Card Kingdom, and then it went dropped to 570. I don't know where they are now, but yeah, if you're going to put your money into something, um, it's it's got to be the dual lands. And people say, oh, put them in unlimited, revise, there's so many copies of it. But like, think about how many new players there are. Think about how many EDH players there are. Like the first thing an EDH player wants, like a professional, maybe they're 25, 30, 35, 40, when they get into Magic the Gathering, because maybe a Lord of the Rings or Fallout or something like that, the first thing they go after is this. The demand for this is incredibly high. Um, I don't think it's ever been higher. And I took this as a joke. I mean, I didn't want to, I mean, it would be really really good for me to make a video about all oh, negative investment oh don't invest because that's the kind of video i would want to make but holy shit man i mean i don't i don't know what else to say except number one they're beautiful cards number two they're the demand is through the roof like you can't even you can't even right let's uh go ahead and find the volcanics i guess we can look at the trop because we got more trops um these you can trade into lotuses you can trade these into modern fallout any game store would be happy to take these off your hands for 70 60 percent 50 percent is a steal uh, for these these game stores don't pay anything but they will understand they will have to pay for this because it is just so high the prices have never in my opinion the buy list has never been higher and i track the buy list almost every day for the dual lands on card kingdom it is what it is, right? This is the uh, investment opportunity, if you will. Nothing else. Hi, guys.